After watching this video lecture, students are going to be able to differentiate between numbers and quantities, um, as well as convert between metric units using a uh, basic decimal place movement associated with SI units. Okay, so let's go ahead and start out by differentiating between, between numbers and quantities. Okay, so the measurements that you guys have taken in your previous labs and such represent quantities. Okay, and quantities consist of a number and a specific unit of measurement. So um, something like the number 25, that's a value, right? That's a number, okay? Um, miles is a unit of measurement. And if you put those together, 25 miles, that is a quantity. Now, why is it important to use quantities to express our measurements? Well, if I come to the front of the class and say, hey guys, tomorrow I need you to bring over 25, all of you guys are going to ask me, 25 what? And so the unit component of the quantity is necessary so that we all know what we're talking about and what we're referring to. So um, it allows us to all clearly communicate with one another. So a quantity is going to be a number value and a unit of measurement. So as we start discussing the type of measurement system that we're going to use, we're going to be looking obviously at the metric system or the international system of units. Um, sometimes it's abbreviated as SI. Uh, so basically, you guys are actually probably familiar with several of these units, if not all of them. Um, and what you need to know about the SI units is that all the other units can be derived from these base units that we see here. So there's some interrelationships between each of these. Um, and we'll look at those types of things a little later. But for right now, these base units um, are going to represent different types of measurements. So the meter is used for length, the kilogram for mass, the second for time, ampere for basically current measurements, Kelvin for temperature, candela for um, luminous intensity, and the mole is going to tell you the amount of substance. And if you look here, I want you guys to also notice that each one of these have an, an abbreviation associated with them. Um, and these are uh, things that you will see um, in your quantity values. So like 25m with a lowercase m means 25 milliliters, or 3.23 kilograms represents the mass. Okay, um, and so there's various uh, uh, types of units that exist and come up, um, but basically these base units are what you need to initially be familiar with so that you can maximize the uh, possibilities associated with uh, the metric system. So now, um, before we go into uh, the cool parts of the metric system and how it makes your life really easy when it comes to conversions, I do want to point out a small detail. Okay, so the kilogram Okay, the kilogram is the base unit um, for the metric system's mass. However, when we start talking about moving decimals and what we consider the base unit with respect to decimal movement, um, we will not be defining the kilogram as that particular base um, starting point. So um, if I ask you what the base unit is for meters, or, or excuse me, for length, you're going to tell me meters. Um, if I ask you what the base unit for mass is, you are going to tell me kilograms. However, when we go over to talk about the conversion components today, I want you to understand that you are not going to have kilogram in the base position um, for our little uh, acronym that we use. So the really cool thing about the metric system is that all of the units are interrelated by powers of 10. Okay, so if we're talking about the relationship between meters and centimeters or um, kilometers and, and meters, Okay, those are all going to be able to be interrelated and interconverted by simple decimal movements. Okay, so if we start out with uh, the measurement of meters, okay, so we're using meters to measure the length of something. Okay, we know that meter is the base unit, okay, and so its starting point is going to be a power of 10. But because it's the base unit, that power of 10 is going to be 10 to the 0th, right? So um, that's our jump off point to convert in between various other um, measurement types associated with length. Okay, so um, meters to kilometers, if you look at um, the power associated with the base unit for meter and you note and you look at the power associated with the kilometer, okay, you notice that um, the kilometer is almost a thousand times larger than the meter. 
Okay, and on the same vein or the same thought process, a millimeter, right? A millimeter is going to be basically a thousand times smaller than the meter. And this interrelationship gives us a really, really nice method um, to interconvert between units um, in the metric system. You know, I can easily move a decimal to convert between meters and kilometers, um, but if I wanted to interconvert between you know, miles and feet or inches, I would need to do um, some more involved work. And we'll look at those types of conversions later, um, but today we're just going to focus on the easy decimal movement. So, okay, I want you guys to remember uh, this, this range here um, from the kilometer or from the kilo prefix all the way to the milli. That's what we're going to be focusing on today. And I'm going to teach you a nice little um, mnemonic to help you out um, for your inner conversions there. Okay, so um, if we look at this uh, breakdown here, um, we have our kilo, uh, we have our hec hecto, we have deca, we have base, we have deci, we have centi, we have milli. Um, that represents the prefix associated with that range that I showed you on the last slide. Okay, now we can remember um, this order by using the uh, mnemonic um, either Kevin hates dates because dates cost money or King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. These are all um, mnemonics to help you remember um, the order of all of our various prefixes. Okay, now how would we utilize this to help us interconvert between um, one unit of measurement and some other um, version of that unit? Okay, and so if we go ahead and we look at meters, okay, meters here is what they want us to convert into. Um, from kilometers, okay? So first of all, we need to figure out where meters are gonna be in terms of this um, setup here, okay? So meters are the base unit, right? And I wanna go um, from kilometers, from kilo, to meters, which is the base unit, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my one kilometer, okay? And I'm going to count one, two, three spaces. I've moved three spaces to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my decimal point that's here and move one, two, three spaces to the right. So what that's gonna give me is 1,000. So there are 1,000 meters in one kilometer, okay? Um, if we go over here, okay, I have one decigram and they wanna know how many grams are in um, a decigram, okay? So if we look at that, remember grams are gonna be the base unit for this particular setup, but if I ask you what the SI base unit is for mass, you're gonna tell me kilograms. So that's just bringing back what we discussed a little bit earlier. Okay, but for this um, approach, we're going to go ahead and we're gonna have our grams as our base unit. Okay, now decigrams is where we start. Okay, so I have one decigram and I wanna go from the decigram to my base unit, okay? So I'm gonna move one space to the left, okay? So if I'm moving my decimal one space to the left, that's gonna be 0.1 grams as my unit of um, measurement here, okay? So, okay, so let's go ahead and talk about um, both of these movements that we've done so far. I wanna point something out, guys. Um, your decimal movement should make sense with respect to the size of the number, right? So if I am starting with kilometers here and I'm converting to meters, I know that kilometers are larger than meters. So when I go from a value associated with a larger unit of measurement, when I convert into the smaller unit of measurement, the numerical value associated with that measurement should increase. Conversely, if I'm starting with a smaller unit of measurement and going to a larger one, the numerical value associated with that specific quantity um, should be decreasing, right? It should get smaller. Why? Because I'm converting from a smaller unit of measurement into a larger unit of measurement. Additionally, guys, I wanna point out that when you're doing these conversions, when you're moving in between, uh, one unit of measurement and another, whatever number of significant figures you start with, right, you need to end up with. So I have one sig fig here. So 
My answer here should have one sig fig. Notice I didn't put a decimal point at the end here. Same idea here. Okay, I have one significant figure. Okay, my number over here has one significant figure. Um, this could also be written as 0 0.1 grams. That would be acceptable as well because leading zeros are never significant. Okay, and if we come over here to our other examples, um, we have 100 seconds. Notice there's a decimal at the end of this number. Okay, so there are three significant digits in there. So three significant digits are going to end up um, in our final answer. But we're going from seconds to milliseconds. Okay, so seconds is going to be our base. Okay, so and we're going over to milli. Okay, so if we're going from base to milli, that's one, two, three spaces to the right. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move this decimal three spaces to the right. So one, two, three. So, okay, we have those additional um, zeros there. And of course, um, our units, milliseconds, okay? And now we need to make sure that we're indicating that three sig figs are here, okay? Now we have options here. We can either write this in scientific notation um, or we can use the bar method and just mark um, that third digit as significant. So it's up to you what you wanna use. Okay, um, and then this last example, we have 10 grams, or excuse me, 10 milligrams of um, a substance, and we want to convert to grams. So we're going from milli back to the base. Okay, so we're moving three spaces to the left. Okay, and so that's going to give us 0 0.010 grams. Okay, notice I've moved one, two, three spaces. Okay, and my units, obviously, I've gone to a larger unit of measurement, so my numerical value um, should be smaller in this case. Okay, so this is how we convert uh, between the basic SI units. Um, this approach will allow us to get interrelationships between any of um, these types of measurements um, in the metric system. Okay, and so it's a really easy way to interrelate all of these.